Hello and welcome. My name is Kirk Hafner. I am president of South Sound Solar. I earned my master's in physics from the UW in 1996 with the goal to be a solar energy expert. Please take a few minutes to learn about how solar works in Washington State. You know, people often ask, does solar work in Washington State? We don't have good sunlight. Yes, in the winter time, we have the marine climate, we're highly overcast and we have short winter days. But if you compare that to Germany, Germany is the world's leader in solar installs right now. They're somewhere between 40 and 50% of all solar installs in the world are happening in Germany. They have the national goal to shut down all their nuclear plants. They have the national goal to be much more energy independent and they're doing that with solar. And they actually on average get less sunlight than we do in Washington State. This is a measure of solar insulation, which is how much sunlight strikes the earth on average. And you can see Germany and the central and northern parts are down in the low, about 1,000 kilowatt hours uh, per day. We're a little above that in the blue, 11 to 1,200. We get about 20% more. So how does solar work? We're going to slow down and just kind of go through this. Typically, we're pacing solar electric panels on a roof. A roof is already an engineered structure. It's really easy to attach to. We can attach to the roof safely, securely, without any um, issues of, of water leakage or anything like that. And those panels produce DC or direct current electricity. Okay? That's like the power that comes out of a flashlight. Okay? It just flows in a single line of electrons. Well, then what we do is we take that and we put that electricity into what's called an inverter. And the inverter takes the DC electricity and makes alternating current AC electricity, which is a perfect sine wave. Alternating current is what we use in all of our buildings. It's what our grid is based on. A typical house has 240 volts coming in from the utility and a 200 amp panel. Right? And then from there, the electricity is distributed to all the appliances and circuits in the house. Well, this inverter um, is literally smarter than the grid. Okay? It monitors that grid, and it matches that waveform perfectly. And it was this technology that was first started back in the late 1990s that allowed us to make electricity on our roofs and plug it right back into the grid. On a straight grid tight system, those inverters will not work unless they have 240 volt, what is recognized as utility power into them. They monitor that. As soon as that breaks, they must shut down no matter what. Now, what they did to make it even better, they said, well, if you're gonna be making your own electricity, that means, wow, maybe we don't have to build as many power plants, right? That means we could have more of a decentralized grid. Maybe, maybe we should encourage you to do that. And the encouragement came through where we place one of the production meter. We add another electrical meter to the installation and it measures all of the electricity that comes off that house. And you get paid anywhere from 15 cents to 54 cents a kilowatt hour for all of the electricity that system produces on your home. Okay? That comes in the form of a check once a year and it's currently on the books until 2020. We have a slide later on where we'll go over that again. Then that electricity feeds your house. Okay? Whenever there's light outside, basically, from dawn till dusk, those solar panels are producing electricity. And maybe a little, right, if it's low light level or overcast, or it may be a whole lot at full capacity when it's sunny and bright. Okay? So when that electricity feeds into your electrical panel, as far as all of the appliances, light circuits in the house are concerned, they can't tell whether that electricity is coming from the grid or coming from the solar. It's identical. It matches up. Okay? But if you're producing your own electricity here, that means you're not buying so much from the grid. So your electric bill goes down. Okay? Whatever you produce in that solar is offsetting what you would need to buy from the utility. But wait, there's one better. What if you're producing more electricity than you can use? Okay? Well, if that's the case, then that excess electricity literally goes back out into the grid. Your neighbors are using it. Surrounding buildings are using it. And when it does, it replaces your existing household meter. It is a bi-directional meter. That means it not only measures the electricity coming from the utility, 
and measures the electricity going back out. And when you're producing excess electricity, it goes back out, you receive an additional credit on your utility bill. Okay? So let me just kind of summarize that. So yes, when you make solar electricity, you get paid twice. You get the full credit for the production incentive, and you get full credit off your utility bill. So what we just talked about, production incentive. This is where we install the separate meter. It measures all the electricity the system produces. You get paid anywhere from 15 to 54 cents a kilowatt hour. What determines the rate is the choice of product. If you buy everything that's not made in Washington State, okay, but there's good companies all over the U.S. and world, you get paid 15 cents per kilowatt hour. If you buy your panels and inverter that are made in Washington State, you get 54 cents a kilowatt hour. And yes, the Washington State product is a little bit more expensive, but if you look at the cost versus the benefit, okay, um, more than half of our customers are choosing the Washington State product. The net metering, this is where I talked about the, the replacing the household meter. Um, if you're producing more electricity than you can use, that electricity goes back out into the grid, you get a credit for it, your neighbors use it. Use it. This according to state law, will never go away. We can always net meter now. This does have a limited time offering. And finally, the federal tax credit is the other big incentive. This is a tax credit, not a tax deduction. Okay, and most people aren't used to working with a tax credit. If you invest $10,000 into a solar system, Okay, your tax liability with the IRS goes down by $3,000, 30%. What do we do when we come to your house? Well, we bring a little tool and we want to measure the solar potential. And this is an example on one here. It's a real simple one, solar pathfinder. But it's an amazing little tool. It's well engineered. Quite simply, I can stand in one place or sit or whatever I'm doing. And I can tell you for every hour of the day and every month of the year whether you, when you get sunlight here from standing in that one place. We take a snapshot of it, and you can see here's kind of the profile. This is hours of the day, and the lines are months of the year. So we've got from December up until, up until June. And in this case, we're looking at shading from a big tree. But we're able to take a snapshot, plug it into a computer algorithm, and accurately predict within 1% how many kilowatt hours of electricity a solar system at this site would produce? And we want to be very accurate in that because that determines how much electricity it produces is how much you're going to save off your utility bill, right? Is how much you're going to earn from your production incentive. Solar exposure, we're in the northern hemisphere, so we want to be facing due south. If you're going to deviate from south, if you go east or west a little bit, that's fine. It doesn't change production too much. But definitely if you get more than that, then your, your production will really go down. We've done installs on a west roof. We saw a reduction in the, the solar uh, by about 15%. This is what we're going to be looking at as a snapshot of what the sun profile is for your house or, or residence, okay, with different trees. And then from there, you know, calculate what your solar potential is. And I'll tell you right now, we tell people no. We don't want to put solar where it's not going to work, right? We don't want to put solar where it's at risk. So we've had customers that have, you know, literally wanted to give us a down payment check for thousands of dollars and said, no, talk to your homeowners association, we'll help write a letter if you can get those trees removed, besides they're dangerous, they're going to come on your house in the next windstorm anyway, then we'll talk about solar. Really the best angle is whatever angle your roof is at. <laughs> and <laughs> I just made that up. Uh, no, the reason is, is for engineering purposes, it's much easier to what we call flush mount. We put it in the same plane as the roof. And whether you're a 412 or a 612 or an 812, your production only varies by just a few percent when it comes to BV. Um, ideal is about a 712 pitch, roughly about 30 degrees. Okay, by data, you will get the most electric production uh, at that angle. The other thing that we want to work with, again, is budget. It's, it's, this is a big investment, and we'll work with you to size the system or to um, select the components that work within your budget. Thank you for watching. 
I hope you now all are solar enthusiasts. For more information, please go to our website at www.southsoundsolar.com and go solar!